Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing well and taking care of yourselves. So I thought I'd introduce myself a bit. My name is Clara. Some of you may know me on Instagram as Stereoscopic Clara, and I am from Australia. So I've been dabbling in stereoscopy since around mid to late December of last year. So by the time this presentation occurs, it would have been around a year since I've been taking stereos, give or take. Um, and yeah, it's been truly a marvellous experience. I have learned lots, experimented lots, but most of all, I have made so many kind and supportive and absolutely brilliant stereo pals, especially in the Instagram community. And I have to be honest, I don't know where I would have been <laughs> without their consistent encouragement and support. So I'm sure this it will include a lot of you folks who will be watching this presentation on 11th of December. So this is a huge thank you to all of you guys um, for being such a dear to me and for being just so lovely um, all the time. I want to just quickly give two more shout outs. The first one obviously goes to Dr. Brian May. If it wasn't for his absolutely monumental autobiography of his band Queen in 3D, I genuinely don't know whether I would even be into stereoscopy. Um, I think it's not rocket science to figure out that I am a big fat queen fan. So this was definitely, um, definitely a book that has changed my life for the better. Um, it's made it do a huge 180. I cannot imagine my life without stereoscopy now. So thank you so much to Brian. And of course, I want to say thank you to his support and kindness. I'm sure a lot of a um, lot of people in the audience can attest to that. And I want to give a shout out to um, the VSC team, of course. Um, thank you so, so, so much for inviting me to do a talk. Um, it is truly the biggest honor, the biggest privilege um, to give a talk hosted by the VSC, um, especially given the fact that I haven't even been taking stereos for um, a year yet. Um, so yeah, this is really big for me. It'll definitely go into the bucket list of achievements um, as a stereoscopist that I can finally tick off um, doing a talk, giving a talk hosted by the VSC. So thank you so much. So the talk I'm going to be giving today is basically just a demonstration of how you can convert a 2D photo to a 3D photo. Now, this is obviously nothing new. Um, I am sure there are many here who have dabbled in this. Um, but I suppose what I'm going to be doing today is showing you one method, because there are several ways to do this, of course. But the method that I'll be demonstrating will be using Leopix and also Stereo Photo Maker. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Excellent. Okay, so I'm currently on the Leopix Converter website. Now, what this website does is that it uses AI technology to read the 2D photo that you want to convert, and it will render it into 3D. Okay, so let me actually show you guys more in depth what I mean, of course. Uh, so I have to, of course, upload a photo. Now you can upload anything, right? You can upload a drawing, a painting, um, but I guess the main thing is that you gotta adjust the depth. And I'll explain what that means, of course, um, but let's wait for this to load. Okay, it's loaded, lovely. So I took this photo from a train window. Um, you can see the Sydney Harbour, Sydney Harbour Bridge in the background. Um, and you can also see that there's motion now. Okay, so it's not just a static photo, there is motion. And you can also see that pretty much every single pixel has a varied depth. Okay. Um, there are gates in the front, right? You can see that's very, very close to the screen. The Harbour Bridge is very, very far behind. You've got street lamps. You've got trees that gradually become further and further away from the screen. You've got more street lamps, cars, buildings, the sky, etc. So now what we want to do is we want to adjust the depth map. Okay, so the question is, what is a depth map? So a depth map is an image that basically determines the depth of anything, a pixel, 
within a photo or drawing, okay? Or you can say an object, right? It basically just determines every single section, the depth, sorry, it basically determines the depth of whatever you point to in a photo. So what I mean is, right, you can see, right, it is on a black to white scale. You can see that this is quite light gray slash white um, here, which makes sense because the gates are basically the foreground. They're very, very close to the screen. And on this website, white means near the screen and black is far away. And that makes sense, right? Because you can see all these trees, they are gradually becoming um, further and further away and all the way back, it's dark gray. And then the sky is pretty much near black. So the AI technology, right, the AI basically has read this photo pretty well in general. Now the question comes to basically this, how do we adjust the depth map, right? Because it's AI after all, it doesn't have human level accuracy and almost always we need to make adjustments if we want to make sure that our stereo or anaglyph is nice and accurate. Okay, so now let's focus on these four sliders. Um, this one basically allows you to adjust the color of the brush, um, which is basically a scale from black to white, which is what I said. Now, if I put it near, you can see that it's very white, very light gray slash white. If I move it all the way back to far, it's very dark. Okay. So this allows you to paint over wherever you want to paint over to adjust the depth. The size is pretty much what its namesake says. It adjusts the size of the brush. Okay, so if you want to paint over a really small area, you want to make it small. For example, the street lamps. Um, if you want to paint over a very large area, you want to make sure that the brush size is large. Okay, so what's the hardness? Once again, it's just its namesake. If it's very hard... Right, so you can see that, see how distinct the circles are? Now my brush is huge, let me just make it smaller. But you can see how distinct, right, the lines are, the outlines. But if I make it soft, right, it's very soft, um, like what it basically indicates. So this, I suppose, really depends on whether you want to outline anything. If anything has a very, very... Um, if anything has an outline that requires a high level of accuracy, you want to make sure that the brush is hard so you can outline it um, as accurately as you can. The last slider is opacity. So that's basically a scale from transparent to opaque. If it's opaque, it's just like I said, I mean, like what the slider says, right? It's not very clear. You can't really see. I mean, you can still see the cars and stuff, but... Um, it is not as transparent as this. I mean, you can barely see it, right? So I guess that also determines, I guess, the severity of the depth map in a sense. Okay, sweet. Um, great. Now um, I can make some adjustments. Uh, you can see that the gates here, um, they have a, they should have really, really similar depth level, if not the same. Um, so I want to make sure that the depth stays constant. All right, all the way here. So what I do is I click on picker. Now, whatever depth I want to choose, um, I'm going to click on that and it'll, it'll automatically adjust to whatever depth you clicked on. So now what I do, I decrease the size because the railings aren't that large and I essentially color over it. Now I'm using a mouse. Um, some people aren't very steady um, when they use a mouse, but some people are very, very steady when they do. It really depends. Now, I want to go back to, if I click on preview, I want to go back to basically the photo itself. So this mode allows you to actually see the objects clearer, just in case you forget what a section of the photo looks like. I can see that this railing goes all the way to the edge of the photo, so I want to make sure to cover the whole thing. Okay? Now, I can also add more depth on the little railings here, but I'm not going to go through that in this demonstration because of time constraints. But just want to show you guys, see now that it's basically like a constant depth going on here. 
Now I can also adjust the street lamp. Now, like I said, I want to be accurate, and you can see that the street lamp is the street lamp is rather thin. So I can make it pretty hard. The hardness can be pretty hard. I can make the brush small and pick her once again. I want it to be this particular depth. And you can see what happens, right? Go back to preview. You can see that, ah, oh, okay, so I'm following this trail, not the best adjustment, as you can see, but I'm just giving you an example, right? Because a street lamp, you know, why would it have varying depth? If you look at it from afar. Let me just adjust this one here. Okay. So preview, you can see that, of course, there's some discrepancies with the background, but um, with enough patience, uh, you can actually try and minimize that discrepancy. But once again, due to time constraints, I'm not going to make this um, really, really accurate or anything. Um, okay, but you can see that I've changed the depth map a little bit. I've adjusted it. I'm now satisfied, so I'm going to click on save, and it's now updated to this particular depth map. So the question now becomes, how do I transform this into a stereo? Like, lovely, okay, there's an animation going on, but I want it to be a stereo. So what I do is I click on share. This may also take a while to load, once again. Um... All right, hopefully it comes up soon. Okay, right, so you've got a few options here, right? You can share it on social media, um, put on some hashtags, cool, um, all good. But I want to save it as a stereo. Okay, so what I do is the most simple way to do it is save as SBS. Now, what SBS stands for is side by side. So when you click on that, what that does is that Leah Picks would save it automatically as a parallel stereo. So I'm going to click on Save as SBS. Save. If it saves, all right. And it will download the stereo to your computer. Now, hopefully, this loads. Because sometimes it's very slow and you, you know, just got to be patient and all. My apologies for the video cutting off. Unfortunately, this button is taking a really long time to actually generate the parallel stereo. But that's okay because I rarely use this method. And the reason why I rarely use this method is because the only thing it does is that it generates a parallel stereo. For the folks who can only cross eye view. Um, stereos, that's not going to be very helpful. Um, it's not going to be very helpful in determining whether the depth is accurate, whether there are any framing issues or window violations, etc. Okay. Um, and if I had to somehow um, manually make this into a cross eyed stereo, then I'd have to crop the left and right images individually. Um, and that will reduce the quality, which is obviously not ideal. So, what I do is I throw the original pick and depth map into Stereo Photo Maker. So I'm going to download the depth map. Okay. And I'm going to open Stereo Photo Maker. Takes a bit to load, but that's okay. Okay. So I'm on, I'm on Stereo Photo Maker for Mac. Click on the open left and right image, and I'm going to open basically the original pick and the depth map okay they're nicely side by side make sure that the depth map is on the right hand side because that's where you make your adjustments so now the million dollar question how do we adjust depth maps on stereo photo maker so what i do is i right click go to edit go to depth map and then go to correct depth map a little window pops up. Now you can see that there are a few sliders that are very similar to Leah picks. Um, I'm not going to go through them again. They're basically a uh, similar meaning. So how do I paint over a depth map? So I, pr I press down on the command key and then I just click on my mouse, the left-hand side. Um, of course, this is, I am a MacBook user. So I'm on a Mac right now. Um, if you, if you use a PC, then of course you, hold down the control key 
Now, if I want to use the equivalent of the picker button on layer picks, basically I want to pick the depth and stick to that depth. Um, what I do is instead I click on, I press down on the command key and right click on the mouse uh, using my mouse. Okay. So you can see that while I'm right clicking, the numbers basically change because I'm going to different levels of depth. Okay. Right. Nice and simple. So, um, of course, if I want to adjust more, I'm not going to do much adjusting here due to time constraints. But, of course, if you are free uh, in your own spare time, please put in all the hours you need to adjust the depth map um, in order to ensure a decent stereo. Okay, so now the question comes is, the, now the question comes to how do I make these really nice gradient sections of the depth map. The simple answer is you can't. There isn't a function on Stereo Photo Maker that allows you to draw a gradient. Now, this is actually a limitation of this method. Um, the way you can solve this limitation would be to use um, other software like uh, Photoshop. Um, of course, Photoshop requires a paid sub subscription. Um, so I guess the good thing about this particular method is that both Leopix and Stereo Photo Maker are free. So if you don't have Photoshop or you don't want to download Photoshop, then that's okay. There is a method that I use. It's not always ideal, but it works. It works most of the time. So what I do is I press down on my command key. I press down shift. And by the way, I have to hold all of these, right? And I press down on the letter B. Okay. So now this comes up. And what this does is that it will basically, if I right if i draw over the image here and i click on it it will blur the gradient so see how it's blurred now so if i continue doing this here see how this gradient has blurred so it now gives a smoother transition between two pretty um different depths okay so obviously the downside is that it will also blur the original Okay, it will blur the original. So what I do is that when a situation pops up and I have to actually use this particular function, I click on file, save left, right images. And then in order to not overwrite the original photo, I save the left one as blurry, save the right one as depth map version one. Okay, to not overwrite the original depth map, just in case it doesn't work out. Okay, I always make sure to save backup copies in case it doesn't work out. I save, now it's saved onto my desktop or wherever you want to save, okay? Okay, I'm going to go back to the two original, um, the original pick and the original depth map. Excellent. So I don't want to adjust anymore. I now want to generate the stereo. So I go to edit, I go to depth map, and then I go to create 3D image. If you want to be very picky, you can also adjust the deviation and other factors, but I'm okay, I'm happy. I'm going to click okay. Okay, so now I've got this lovely stereo with me. Um, I can cross my eyes. I'm going to probably look a bit ridiculous, but um, uh, sometimes when you actually have to be uh, have to adjust stereos, crossing your eyes and undoing and keep on adjusting the depth map is a process you're going to go through a lot. Okay, because of course you can only tell if your adjustment is good enough for you for your eyes at least if you um, generate it into a stereo first, right? So if anything pops out and it shouldn't be popping out, you want to undo, make your adjustments wherever necessary, okay? I'm pretty happy with this. Now the remaining thing to do is make sure that there are no framing issues or window violations. So I keep on pressing down. I hold down the left arrow key. Cross, cross my eyes. Okay, lovely. Right, it's nicely framed now, okay? Great. If I want to, this is a cross-eyed version. If I want to change it to parallel, just press the X button. Okay. Great. Obviously, there are a few rivalries here, right? And of course, if you have the time, fix that. That will be really good. Um, and I think there has to be like buttons on Photoshop or other apps that can allow you to fix that better. But anyway, um, okay, sweet. So we've now got this lovely stereo. It's framed well and all. And now I can save it. So I can either save this as a stereo, a side-by-side -side stereo, um, cross and parallel, 
or I can save it as individual images. Usually I want to add some lighting, filtering, coloring, etc. And I want to do them to the in images individually. So I save the two images individually. This time I'm going to color uh, code it as left and right. Save. We're all good. Okay, so now it's saved. We've got the left and the left and the right images. Easy. Okay, so this marks the end of our serial conversion process. A reminder before I actually properly end the presentation, and that is if you are going to be sharing this on social media, please, please be transparent with the process that you use because there are people who hand draw depth maps from scratch. I have done that before personally, and it does take a very, very long time. So most of the time I use this method just to be more time efficient since not everyone, all of us have the time to actually hand draw depth maps. Um, so yeah, like I said, if you've used Leopix and you've used Zero Photo Maker to adjust it, please, please mention that somewhere in your caption, right? Because we want to be nice and honest and transparent here. We don't want people to think that, you know, you've actually um, done more than you've you've had. Um, that is always rather misleading. So please be please be transparent with your conversion process. And if you've done that, then, you know, happy sharing, right? So thank you so much once again to all of you who listened in. I really hope that this presentation was somewhat useful and enjoyable. And if you have any questions, then please, please DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is stereoscopic underscore Clara. I'm Clara with a K. So K-L-A-R-A. And yeah, take care out there. And I am keen to see any um, newbie stereo converters. Uh, hopefully there will be some after this presentation. Okay, great. Take care out there and hopefully I'll um, one day be able to attend a VSC meeting live. See ya.